My name is Brian Watchers of VMware Education. In this segment, we'll be exploring how to use storage DRS. A data store cluster is a collection of data stores that are grouped together. Typically, the reason why you'd create a data store cluster is in order to enable storage DRS on that cluster. When you enable storage DRS, that causes the data store members to work together cooperatively to balance the capacity across the cluster. In other words, storage DRS arranges so that the data stores don't become lopsided with one data store more heavily utilized than other data stores in terms of the capacity utilization. Storage DRS also takes into consideration IO latency. Once again, balancing virtual machine files across the data store cluster in order to balance the IO across the cluster. Storage DRS provides numerous functions, including when you create a virtual machine, DRS, storage DRS will decide the initial location to place the virtual machine files. Storage DRS leverages storage vMotion to balance your virtual machines across the cluster, again, based upon the storage utilization levels of the different data store members and the IO latency on the data stores. Additionally, Storage DRS provides the ability to automatically evacuate virtual machines from the data store if ever you need to take a data st storage array down for maintenance. Like DRS, Storage DRS is configurable. You can put your Storage DRS cluster into a manual mode or into a fully automated mode. And like DRS, Storage DRS also has the concept of affinity and anti-affinity rules to govern where virtual machine files are placed in your storage arrays. When Storage DRS is enabled on a data store cluster, if you create, clone, or migrate a virtual machine, you'll simply select a data store cluster rather than selecting an individual data store. Storage DRS will decide for you which data store is the best place to place the VM's files. Storage DRS bases that decision upon the I.O. utilization and I.O. latency of the data store. When Storage DRS makes migration recommendations, it bases those recommendations on the utilization threshold that you can set and an I.O. latency threshold that you can set. When those thresholds are exceeded, Storage DRS makes recommendations. The utilization threshold is checked every five minutes. On the other hand, the IO latency is checked every eight hours. Here are a few general rules about data store clusters. Data store clusters and the lens they're in can come from multiple storage arrays. However, those data stores and the lens should have similar performance characteristics. Data store clusters are new in vSphere 5. Therefore, earlier products do not have this capability. When you have a data store with storage DRS enabled, you should not mix VMFS and NFS data stores in the same data store cluster. And furthermore, you should not mix replicated data stores with non-replicated data stores. In this demonstration, we'll see how to create a storage DRS enabled data store cluster. We'll begin by changing views to the data stores and data store clusters view. To create the cluster itself, we'll right-click a data center object and choose New Data Store Cluster. We name the cluster, and then we specify whether or not we want Storage DRS enabled on this cluster. I'll leave it checked as it is by default so that we end up with a DRS, excuse me, a Storage DRS enabled Data Store Cluster. On this screen, I can specify whether or not I want the data store cluster and storage DRS fully automated or in manual mode. I'm going to go with the default again, which is manual. And then on this screen, we specify how we want the decision-making process for storage DRS to behave. The first checkbox allows us to specify whether IO metrics such as IO latency are considered in the storage DRS decision-making process. And then the two sliders allow us to set the thresholds at which Storage DRS makes recommendations. The first threshold allows us to specify the utilization level. 
And the second threshold allows us to specify the amount of IO latency before we start making recommendations. There is an advanced section here. And when you look at it, you can see that we can fine tune how much imbalance has to exist between the source and destination data store. And furthermore, how frequently we check for imbalances. And finally, we also have a slider, much like with DRS, that allows us to control how aggressive we want storage DRS to be. We then need to specify which hosts, or in our case, which cluster we want the storage DRS capability to operate with. Then on the next screen, we specify which data stores we want to belong to this data store cluster. I'm going to choose data store A and data store B. And then we have a summary screen explaining what is about to be created. If I click Finish, you'll see that the data store is created very quickly. And in fact, this is not just a data store cluster. This is a storage DRS-enabled data store cluster. With a data store cluster that's enabled for storage DRS, we learned earlier that we have a number of features. For instance, whenever we create a virtual machine, Storage DRS is going to make recommendations about where the virtual machine's files should be placed. So once again, I'm going to change views, this time to VMs and Templates view. And in this view, I'm going to create a virtual machine. Now, I'm not actually going to install an operating system in it. So we'll just create a, a skeleton or a shell of a virtual machine. So I'll specify New Virtual Machine. Then I can choose Typical or Custom. For our purposes, typical will be sufficient. As I create the virtual machine, I name the virtual machine. I choose where I want it to run. I choose specifically which host I want it to run on. And then I can specify which data store I want it to run, which data store I want the files stored in. And notice I still have the choice of some other data stores. Uh, for instance, the shared data store and the local 01 data store are not part of my data store cluster. If I want to, I can install my virtual machine into either of those data stores. But with the data store cluster that I created called my data store cluster, I can simply choose to have the VM's files stored someplace on one of the data stores, any of the data stores in this data store cluster. Again, I don't have to specify which specific data store, I just simply say, place my VM's files into the, dear, into the data store cluster. And then, since we're pretending to create a virtual machine here, I'll say I'm going to install Windows. I'll say I want some, a virtual NIC. I want a virtual disk that is not quite that big. We'll go a little smaller, since this isn't a real virtual machine anyways. And when we click Finish, we end up with a new virtual machine. And if we go examine that virtual machine, we should find that the virtual machine's files are either in data store A or data store B, since those are the two data stores in our data store cluster. So if I select the virtual machine and click the Summary tab, then look in the Storage section, we can see, in fact, that the, v the data stores excuse me, the VM's files are in that particular data store cluster. Later on, if I decide to migrate, or for that matter, clone the virtual machine, Storage DRS once again will select for us which data store to place the VM's files into. Again, if I say change data store, if I were to choose to move the files to another data store, then the VM's files would move to that data store. On the other hand, if my files were, for instance, in the shared data stores, in the shared data store, I could move the VM's files into my data store cluster. Again, I don't have to specify exactly which data store. I simply say I want my VM's files in one of the data stores in this data store cluster. This concludes our demonstration.
In the demonstration, we showed you how to create a storage DRS-enabled data store cluster. On this slide, you can see the effect of having such a data store cluster. When you have a storage DRS-enabled data store cluster, the storage DRS technology looks for opportunities to balance the load of the data stores, looking for recommendations such as the ones we see on the slide here. Again, we can see multiple recommendations where storage DRS is specifying an opportunity to move VMs, AVMs files from one data store into another data store in order to either balance for uh, utilization levels across the data stores or IO latency. And this interface that we see here on the storage DRS tabs works very similar to the DRS tab that we saw when we studied DRS in a previous segment. VMware Education Services offers training in over 500 training centers across the world in 60 different countries. We offer both direct training and training through our VMware authorized training centers. We offer instructor-led training in both classroom and live online formats. We offer private on-sites and e-learning modules available online. To find out more information, please see us online at the URLs listed on the screen. Thank you.